Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Poor Man Mods. Today is a real Poor Man Mod that I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting to see. I'm going to be welding a differential here for the Supra. Now, some of you may know, if you remember, a while ago, one of our videos, we reinstalled our differential after we got it shimmed. We got a Weir Wire Stage 2 shim kit for it. I had it professionally installed by a shop. It was supposed to increase the breakaway torque of the differential, almost making it a fully locked rear to where it would be posy all the time. I even did a video where I measured the breakaway force of the rear end and it was significantly increased. But recently, the car has been doing one wheel fucking burnouts, donuts. Well, not, can't even do a donut because it's one wheel. Like, no matter what I do with this, I, it's just one wheel. I can't drift it, can't do a donut, can't do a burnout. And it's really pissing me off. And I'm not about to throw a cause diff in there or reshim it or do the full spool kit or whatever. So I'm doing it the poor man mods way this time. I have an open rear here. I got this from a Facebook friend of mine for like 75 bucks. And I'm going to attempt to weld it myself. Um, it could go horribly wrong. I could do really well. I'm not sure. I've never done it before. I don't want to say this is a how-to video because I don't want to tell you how to do it and it'd be wrong. So this is just a video of me welding a differential and putting it in my Supra. Um, I'm going to keep my limited slip that doesn't do shit as a spare. Probably not going to sell it in case I fuck up with this. And you can probably do this in the car. I'm sure you can, but taking it out is going to make it a lot easier. And the first step is to drain the fluid, which this is already kind of self-draining because it's got a leak, but uh, I'm going to accelerate the process and try to take off this drain plug and get this nasty fluid out of here. Is there anything in it? <laughs> no. Good thing I didn't put it in the car. Um, I guess the next step is taking the cover off. I'm really curious as to how this thing was leaking fluid when nothing drained out. Makes no sense to me. I fucking hate these things. This oil pan is just leaking oil and there's nothing in it. It just constantly leaks. Might need a pry bar for this. Man, there really wasn't anything in here. Oh, it stinks. Ugh. Oh, there's a little bit. So, now, the first step of this is to uh, obviously drain all the fluid out. All right, so now that we've cleaned it out for the most part and it's drained overnight, um, to weld this, this isn't your typical open rear. As you can see, it's not very open. It is an open rear though. So we're gonna take this entire piece out to get to it and weld it better. And the first step is to get these axles out. A slide hammer is the preferred method. Keep whacking it. You always gotta whack it. So you don't need a hammer, or you don't need a slide hammer for this, but it makes it easier. These are my favorite screwdrivers, by the way. These are the channel lock screwdrivers. They're metal all the way through. So you actually get most of the energy through the screwdriver. It doesn't get absorbed by the handle. We can take off the main caps here. These are a 17 millimeter. And I'm not sure if all this is side dependent, but I'm gonna keep everything together. Whew, that smells awful.
main cap. Looks just like a, a cap for a crank. And now I guess uh, this whole differential can come out, right? This probably isn't the preferred method, but fuck it, it's getting welded. And I'm assuming now would be a good time to replace all the bearings and such, right? I just want to keep everything organized. I've never done this before, I've never taken a differential apart. So I don't want to mess up. I guess the bearings stay on. Now we get to take off the ring gear. Okay, now we have to take this ring gear off the differential. And to do that, you have to take off these, I don't know, 12, 16 bolts. But there's these brackets on that hold the bolt in place so they don't spin. So what you need to do is get yourself a screwdriver and hammer out the tab. See how this tab bent down? So this tab is now bent down. You need to bend down all of these to take these bolts off. And then once you do that, then you can undo the bolts. It's gonna take a long time. I don't think I need to show you that, but uh, just hammer these tabs down. Now that we have all of these tabs hammered down, we can loosen all of the bolts. I don't know if this needs hammered off or what, but all the bolts are loose. No idea how to remove this, but I'm going to take a guess and just say you can hammer it down up. by not being a bitch. Yep. The trick to removing this is not being a pussy. Yeah. Okay, so now there's eight more bolts securing this entire housing together. I'm going to take it apart to see if it will make it easier to weld because right now there's only eight holes that we can get to to weld it. So I'm going to take it apart and see if it'll be better. Hey, that was easy. That's it, you're recording. Yeah. Cool. Oh yeah, that'll make it better to weld. Fuck yeah. Weld all that shit together. Uh -huh. But it's lunchtime. Now, like I said earlier, I don't want to call this a how-to because I've never done this before and I don't want to steer you in the wrong direction. If I do something wrong, this is just me doing it. So what I am going to do, basically welding all of these gears together to this gear. So you weld this corner, this corner, basically fill in everywhere that you can with weld. And then uh, you can also weld the gears to the housing too. So uh, I'll show you a couple welds and then I'll show you the final product. So here, I welded the top gear to the bottom gear. Now you just do that all the way around, put as much weld as you can. This could take hours. If you're gonna do it right, it's gonna use a lot of material. So here is my progress so far. I have basically this top welded all together, and I still have to weld this gear on. I left this in the hub like this, so when I welded it, it didn't warp or anything. Tacked it all together and made sure nothing would move. And now I have to do the same thing to this side. 
I'm going to attack each side before I do a lot of welding because I don't want it to warp. But then, once I get it tacked up, I have a big piece of steel plate right here where I cut some strips of steel out. And I'm going to put these in between the gears like that and weld them in. This will give it more strength and it should also make the welding a lot quicker because I'm TIG welding. This would be a lot of material to fill, so this will help with filling it and making it stronger. Here is some of the progress I've made. This side is basically completely welded in. It doesn't look the best because I'm not the best at TIG welding and um, I'm, this is the first time I've ever done this, but this side's basically finished and I'll show you what I did. It's a little more evident right here. What I would do, um, I used a much bigger piece, but I would take strips of steel like this, I would cut up a piece of plate steel and put it in between the gears, put the whole way up and down and I would bridge it together because I, otherwise I'd be using a lot of filler rod. And um, I had these smaller pieces where I would lay it across, maybe like that, or up top, and just to connect everything. So I've been using filler rod, but also filler material like this all over. So like there, I did it, and here. And basically, I want the whole thing to look like this, all filled in. So I'm probably gonna put this piece here. Um, I've got a little more pieces laying around and maybe this guy, another piece right here, just to fill it in. Um, so I tacked all the gears together and it's important to tack this together when it's assembled in the casing. So when I first tacked it, it was in the casing like this with this gear sitting on the bottom and I tacked it here. If I took this entire assembly out and tried to tack it, it could expand with heat and get off a line. But since I assembled it inside the case, it's going to be lined up. So make sure you do it when it's inside the case. So once you get it all tacked up, you just start welding the shit out of it. Basically, the amount I've spent in materials to do this, gas, filler rods, and all that, is probably as much as you would spend if you took it to a shop and have them weld it. So um, I'm getting the experience out of it, but I'm really not saving any money doing this by myself. So here's uh, some partial progress and I will show you what it looks like when it's all finished. So I finally have this all welded up. It is absolutely fugly, but I think it's going to work. Um, like I said, my welds aren't that great. I'm a learning welder, but you know, whatever. It's definitely welded pretty solid. Um, now it doesn't fit in the casing right now because there are some high points like here and here and here where it just hits the outside of the case. So I'm gonna take a grinder and grind this down and make it fit into the casing. We're gonna grind it and make it fit. And then once we get it in the case, I'm gonna do some more welding so people don't fucking say it's gonna break. So let's make this bitch fit. This is many days later. I've uh, spent a lot of time grinding and no, that's no one peeing in the background. That is the rain outside. It's raining ridiculously hard here. This almost fits in the case. Almost. Um, I didn't realize, um, I probably should have realized this before I did so much welding, but yes, it's a little rusty in here. I'll clean it up. But you can see how these, um, I don't know if they're like part of a, I guess it's a bearing for the spider gears, but they kind of concave in. It's not just straight down. So it's, the inside of here is kind of coned in and I basically made this completely square, which it wasn't able to fit. But if you can kind of see, I did taper off on both sides. Now, I've gotten this side to fit pretty freaking good. It fits in there. Yeah, fits in there pretty good. That's about as far as down it's supposed to go. It fits good on this side, but I'm still working on this edge. It almost, almost fits. So on this side, Right here, it's basically fitting. Um, but on this side, I still need to take some material off because, you see how it's stuck there, it's still hitting right here on the bearing. So I need to keep grinding just a little bit more. <laughs> I should have paid closer attention to this. I should have not have built it up so high around here. I should have kept it kind of concave. Um, learn from my mistakes, not yours. So if you are going to weld an open diff like this outside of the case, Make sure you pay attention to stuff like that. Like I always told my ex-girlfriend, I am the master at making it fit. And look. Check this out. It fits. 
Now I can clean this up, bolt it together, and I'm going to replace these axle seals here, and this thing will be ready to go. So I've got them all started by hand, and I'm going to put them out with this impact. It's not too strong. Now I can attempt to reinstall the ring gear. I have no idea if it's supposed to go on a certain place, but I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, looks like it's going to need some persuasion to get in here. Hmm. Now, I know this is not the preferred method at all, um, <laughs> but I feel like you have to heat this up, and I don't have the patience or anything to heat this up that well enough to make it expand over here. So, what I do have is two vices, and I'm going to see if I can get the two vices to make this go together to where I can get a couple bolts in it and then draw it together. This is why I'm not calling it a how-to, because this is not how you do it. This is just me doing it. And it's kind of a good thing, I guess, I didn't put this vice somewhere else. And if it breaks, it fucking breaks, because this was 75 bucks. I don't know. Oh! It's moving. Let's give it some persuasion. Some good old W. George W. for the third term. Oh yeah. Now we can torque these bolts down. I already torqued these inner bolts to 35 foot-pounds. Now we're going to torque these outer ones to about 70. I couldn't find an exact torque spec, everyone just said 70-ish, so I've got my digital torque adapter here. Um, if you don't know what this is or if you want to see more on it, I did a review video on it. I'll have the link right here and you can check it out. It's a pretty awesome thing. It'll beep when it's time for me to stop. Now it's time to put this back in. I'm not going to check backlash or anything. Uh, I didn't. I don't think I have to, and even if I had to, I don't really know how to fix it, so uh, it's going to be a welded shitty diff, so I'm just going to put it in anyway. Nothing really changed. I just took it out, put it back in, so let's try to assemble this motherfucker. I'm going to lube it up before I install anything. I don't know if you're supposed to. Didn't really look that far into it. I'm just doing this. You son of a bitch! Oh my god. This is fucking impossible. This was a motherfucker to get in. Unfortunately, I did it off camera. I had the differential standing up. Kind of got it in there and shimmied it in. And then I was kind of dropping the differential on the ground and it kind of slided itself in there. And now I'm going to run these down and then I'll torque them to proper spec. Now we can try to put the axles back in. Well, there you go. Fully assembled welded diff. Now we just gotta put some RTV on here, put the cover back on and fill it with fluid and we are ready to see if it breaks. All right, so we torqued the carry bearings, put RTV all around the diff, and put this cover on. We painted it this nice, ugly green. So this open rear is green, uh, green for money, because this one's going to be the money money maker right here. It's going to work. And the limited slip is pink, because it's a fucking pussy. And now we're filling it with a quart and a half of 7590 gear oil. And then we can bolt it up to the car.